Uh, welcome to another opening webinar. Uh, my name is Greg Grafinski. I'm a support engineer here in the United States. Um, what we're going to talk about today is expanding volume groups and then logical volumes. Um, we, I previously did a webinar on expanding logical volumes that are in failover, so this is going to be a repeat of some of it, um, but we're going to add on the volume group size today as well. Um, two different ways to increase the volume group, of course, first way is ray migration, adding more drives to the chassis, um, adding a JBOD, that type of thing, um, and increasing the size of the array, or adding an additional array to your controller. Um, it, depending upon the time frame you have and how desperate you are in need of space may depend on which method you use. Of course, RAID migration takes time, and if time is of the essence, then creating a new separate array at the same RAID level may be a better option, depending upon your situation. If the drives are all in the same chassis, uh, creating a new array at the same RAID level uh, might just be faster. Um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, the RAID migration, of course, depending upon what you're adding, can take anywhere from a few hours to a week, depending upon how much size you're adding to the array. Uh, we're also going to talk about increasing logical volumes after the expansion of the volume group, um, logical volumes in relation to replication, snapshots, size cubby targets, um, so forth, NAS volumes, um, increasing the size of the snapshot, um, and such. So to get first thing started here, if you've done a RAID migration um, and it's complete, you'll initially come in to the volume group manager and you'll see your old size on your RAID array and the system have, will have not picked up on the new added space just yet. Clicking rescan won't do it just yet. You have to go to the console screen, um, do control alt X, And in this menu, you want to do the PV resize command. And this tells the system the calculate the new physical volume size. Um, in previous version 6, earlier versions, we're going to be talking about version 7 today. But in earliest, earlier versions of version 6, you had to reboot after doing this. You no longer need to do that. So you simply run the PV resize command. It'll recalculate the new size of the array. And you can get back out of the console. And then from the web interface, you do the rescan. And that'll update the sizes of the units. And of course, at the same time, change the available space in the volume group you've already created. Um, again, this is a RAID migration, so the RAID array is already being used in a volume group. So you'll see the new size here as well, and the available space will also increase. Okay? Now, the other side, or the other option here is to add a new array to the RAID controller. Um, and like I said before, if it's time is of the essence and it's faster to create a new RAID array than you can. You, if you do that, what you will see are new units added. And you can see I've got another array here that's, you know, 1.8, unit 2. And it's available to be a new volume group, new volume group, or I can add that, that space to the volume group. Now here's where the decision and the advantages and disadvantages kind of come into play here on which direction you go. In my case, my unit 2 is the same RAID level as unit 1, and the arrays are in the same chassis. So adding to the volume group wouldn't have any major disadvantage here. Um, if the new array if, was a different RAID level, um, you probably don't want to add it to the existing volume group. 
if the new array is in a different chassis, a JBot, for example, or you know some sort of expander, you, you're not likely to add that to an existing volume group. And the reason behind that is, if one of the chassis were to fail, it will take potentially can take down your whole volume group in a failure. Um, it, guys, if you've got questions along the way, feel free to just type them in the chat window, and I'll try to address them as we go along, or wait till we get to the end, and you can ask all the questions that you like. Um, I've got the speakers muted on my side, so if you try to talk to me, I won't be able to hear you. Um, now, back to this. If, like I said, if it's in a separate JBOD or it's a different RAID level, the best option is to create a new volume group, okay? just for data integrity purposes. Once the volume groups are settled and they're either increased or you've created new a new volume group, then the next process is to actually expand your logical volumes. Now, a logical volume cannot span volume groups. So that's another thing to keep in mind here is that if you have, for example, a 10 terabyte logical volume and it needs to go to 20 terabytes, then you're going to need to make the new space part of the same volume group. And in that instance, you probably want to do the RAID migration or have it as the same RAID level and in the same chassis and add to the existing volume group. When expanding, after that, when expanding logical volumes, there are certain stipulations here that will allow you to expand the volume or not, depending upon what's assigned to the volume. As you guys can see here on the screen, I've got four different volumes and a snapshot. And with the exception of my NAS volume, I can't even delete these. I can't do anything to them yet. And the reason is, is because there are assigned replication tasks or replication is turned on or there's an assigned snapshot that's active. Um, these types of things need to be disabled before the logical volume can be expanded. So because of this, you might, it might be a wise idea to schedule downtime particularly if the device is all iSCSI, because during the process, you have to disable the LUN in the target to actually expand the volume. So if you're in a failover situation, keep this in mind, because you'll not only will you need to do it on the primary node, but you'll need to do it on the secondary node as well. And if it's active-active, of course, the same thing. You'll have to do both nodes. Um, in this case, you can see logical volume 0000 has replication enabled. So in order for me to expand that volume, I've got to disable replication using modify logical volume, disable replication, apply that, and then after this is after this is done, you'll see that the actual delete flag is active, which means I can now, obviously I don't want to delete the volume, but I can now modify the size of this volume larger. Okay. Um, on logical volume 0001, it actually has an active target. So in that case, I have to go over here to my iSCSI targets, select my target, and turn off the LUN, okay? This, at the same time, will disconnect anything that's connected to it, so keep that in mind. Now, back to the volume manager and volume groups, and to my volume group here. Now you'll see LV001, I can now manipulate its size. Now, logical volume 0002 has a snapshot assigned and replication. Now this is 
kind of a two-step process here because as you can see also my snap snapshot here is also grayed out which is an indicator that that is a live active snapshot so I need to first disable my snapshot turn it off and if you're using a, a snapshot as an iSCSI target, uh, you'll need to disable the LUN for that target on the snapshot. Come here, turn off the snapshot. And again, this will disconnect anything that's connected to it. Um, back to the volume manager here. Now that the snapshot is turned off, I can actually, now I can manipulate the size of the snapshot. All right. But the volume it was assigned to, I still can't do anything to it because it has replication assigned as well. So I need to now disable its replication. Oh, there's an assigned. Sign task. All right, so now we also know that tasks need to be removed. So in this case, the snapshot is assigned to it, so I need to remove it. And this kind of takes us through the, the levels at which things are allowed to be done, what will prevent you from doing here, that if there are any replication tasks, snapshot tasks, backup tasks, um, anything of that nature assigned to a volume, you're not going to be able to do anything to it until those things are disabled. The reason behind this is that replication in particular uses a certain amount of free space in the volume, or in the volume group rather, to calculate its level of changes between the source and destination. Depending upon the size of the logical volume, will depend upon how much space is needed to do replication. So as the volume grows, more space is needed. And that's the reason why you have to remove replication, because if I remove it, increase the volume size, then turn replication back on, that free space that's needed is recalculated and reassigned to the volume. Um, deleting a snapshot does not consolidate the data. Um, a snapshot when it started, that's a good question by the way, a snapshot when it started is a picture in time of the data right then on the volume. Um, typically we see snapshots used for backups. So you fire off a snapshot at 8 o'clock in the morning, you start your backup task, and it's taking a backup of what's on the volume at 8 o'clock in the morning. That way you can continue working in the target itself or in the volume, whatever it's being used for, for read-write I.O. Whereas the snapshot would basically be a read-only at that point for backup. Um, and then the backup task would complete, for example, two hours later, the snapshot would be deactivated and then reactivated at some point in the future to do another backup. Okay? So now that I've disabled all my tasks, uh, disabled the snapshots, I deleted the snapshot actually in this case, I'm now free to do anything I really want to with these volumes. So Expanding them is the only direction you can go. You can't shrink them. Um, if you need the volumes to be smaller, you physically need to back up all the data, delete the volume, and recreate it smaller. Um, but basically, that's it. It's really that simple. Like I said, if you're in a failover scenario, uh, you've got HA set up, you need to likely schedule a small downtime window. Um, as you can see here, it doesn't take very long to manipulate these settings. Um, and just to show you here real quick, modifying a volume, you know, I've got a 10 gig iSCSI volume. If I add 10 gigs to it, you know, it still only takes less than a minute or about a minute or so. So the, 
the downtime window doesn't need to be substantial. Um, you can see it's already done here. It's created 20 gigs now. Um, the next step would be to turn replication back on on that volume if it was a volume that was replicated. You know, this process recalculates the amount of space that's needed for the volume and replication. Um, then the next step would be to recreate your replication task here on this volume and just simply start it back up again. Now, after a volume has been expanded and it's in replication, it's not going to, well, it, it shouldn't re-replicate the entire volume. It'll only replicate what's been changed. Why don't I take that back? Since the metadata will be recreated, the volume will re-replicate entirely. Sorry about that. Um, but basically, guys, that's about it. What, are there any questions on this? No questions? I think that basically covers pretty much every scenario as far as logical volumes go. Um, back to the volume group uh, expansion there here for just a second. Um, it's Think about how you need to use the space and how it's physically attached to the server, whether it's the same chassis or in a JBOD, because that will really make a difference on whether you do a RAID migration or create a separate array. And then the decision needs to be made at the volume group level on at what point do you add a new volume group or create a, or, or add to this existing volume group. Now you can see here, like I said, I've got two units here. These two units are the same RAID level. So I can actually take unit two and add it to VG00. Wait, hold on. And this is telling me the space, there will be a new swap and all this good stuff. Um, existing data on your disk will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Now this is telling me that the data that's on Unit 2 will be erased. It's not going to erase what's already on Unit 1. And this, in the end here, this takes a couple of minutes to run through, but in the end here, this will actually expand the size of VG00, incorporating my second unit, which is in the same chassis and the same RAID level. So this is a safe option here. A unit, that's another good question, a unit is the virtual disk on the RAID controller. And that's about the best way to, to, to explain it. For each RAID array, we have a unit. Okay. From each unit, we can create a volume group. Um, from the volume group, we can create multiple logical volumes. That's kind of how the hierarchy works there. Okay, that's done for formatting here. Now if I go back to VG00, you can now see that unit one and two are assigned to it, and my free space has gone up considerably. You know, that doesn't require any of the PV resize stuff from the console. Only the RAID migration requires the PV resize from the console, the actual expansion of an existing array. All right, guys, that's really all I have on this, unless there are more questions.